so hello. Uh, today we are going to be talking about how uh, to conduct a good interview. Uh, so Marta, can you give me some tips on how do I make a good interview? Yeah, I can. Um, firstly, you need to know your goals or in general what you're going to discuss and talk about with the person you're interviewing and you should keep it flexible enough to allow surprising twists and turns. When you prepare the interview alone, you should read as much background information as possible about that person so that you can create the appropriate, appropriate questions and you can listen and you should listen to previous interviews they've been given and you, you must, but you must never copy them, but rather use them as your inspiration to do your own interview. <coughs> Uh, okay, uh, is there any way that I can make my guest uh, more comfortable while uh, we are talking in case they were nervous before the interview? Yes, there are. So, like I said before, you should prepare the questions that are in their territory if it's possible, of course. And you can, uh, it would be really helpful if they're nervous to create a relaxing environment. So, maybe give them a comfortable chair to sit in and give them a glass of water and you can even talk to them if they're nervous so to kind of relax. Uh, is there any particular way that I should uh, start the interview? So since the first question is supposed to be kind of an icebreaker, you should start with some question that really goes from the beginning, so maybe how did you get started based on that person's career? And maybe you can ask something like, where did you grow up, or what do you want to do? You know, it really depends on what um, what person you're interviewing. And actually, you should give that person permission to brag, because that way they'll connect with the audience more. Also, one very important thing is that you should ask open-ended questions and... and uh uh, can you give me an example of an open-ended question? Well, an open-ended question is like something like to follow up question, but you ask something like how, when, who, and such. Um, also, there is an important thing about not using yes or no questions. Okay, so how about yes or no questions? Well, if you mean what are the yes or no questions, well, you shouldn't use them because the, the person you Why, you, why shouldn't I use yes or no questions? Well, you shouldn't use yes or no questions because you're doing an interview and the person you're interviewing is supposed to do all the talking, but maybe you just using some of the follow-up questions to, you know, help them out or something. Then they aren't interesting for the audience, so you want them to keep talking, basically. So if you give your guests an opportunity to, um, you know, express how they feel. So if you have, for example, if you ask them, um, tell me about uh, when, tell me about something that happened, blah blah, or tell me about the time when, or how did you, how did that make you feel? the person or the guest you're interviewing will express more emotion and that will be more interesting for the interview and make it more successful, uh, successful and more lively. Um, also, you should use the power of the pause and that means after someone has answered your question, you should pause intentionally to see if that person will say something more, maybe they add something of their own. So how should I end the interview and how long should the interview last? Mm, approximately 30 minutes, that's like the maximum you should try to keep it in. But I'd say maybe 15 minutes is just enough to cover all the topics you've prepared. And um, well, in the, in the end you should sum it up with just saying thanks to the person you interviewed because they separated their time, because they took their time to come here and actually sit with you talk about their career or such and maybe take the audience for 
joining the listening and if you follow these tips it should give you a successful interview.